You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Little darling, start it up. We're started. We have uh, not just Chad Shank and Greg Chaley and a cast of people who come in and out and occasionally chime in, but we have... From out of the blue, my old manager from when I used to do comedy. <laughs> Those were the days. And then I retired, uh, and then he thought I was serious, so I haven't seen him in <laughs> since July, and now it's almost fucking Thanksgiving or Christmas or yeah. something. I've got my car washing facility all set up. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Breaking Bad reference? I suppose it is. I guess it is now. Yeah. You're muling? Yeah. Hannigan, I picked him up at the airport. Uh huh. Well, no, I walked. I walked to the hotel. Right, well, yeah. We, 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 I, <laughs> you came in late, and I like a, a reason to be in Tucson. Yeah. And uh, so we we had some late night cocktails, and uh, and for the even my but my my periods of sobriety, which were uh, really nice, I felt great, but. When Hennigan showed up, and this is really weird to say, I felt somewhat at peace. Ooh. Well, that freaks me out. Because you know the fucking retirement is all bullshit. Oh. But for a while, it's real. Until And then when he showed up, I go, all right, now I know I'm going to have to work again, because he's going <laughs> to tell me I have to work again. <laughs> but for months, occasionally he'd send me a, a, a text message... Oh, you should look at this article in the Atlantic. I sent you two books. Yeah. You did. I haven't read. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I got to leave town again to read more books. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have thought, like, for me, if I hear an alarm clock, because I don't have, have it, had to set an alarm clock for so many years, if I hear an alarm clock, I would hate it because it would remind me of what it felt like to have to get up and go have to work. To do shit. I would have thought you would have felt the same way if you saw Hennigan, like he's a, <laughs> an alarm clock. Like, oh, shit, I got to go back to work. But I can't response? enjoy my retirement, yeah. which fucking makes me <laughs> even more anxious that... Okay, I could. I could take years off. I mean, uh, depending if I went to a doctor and they said, oh, you have three years tops, I could enjoy those three years maybe, but I can't enjoy being retired. Mm. I don't want to do comedy. Occasionally, I remember a, like a bit I wrote that's more recent than others, and I go, oh, fuck, I, I want to go back on stage and do that bit. I might go up to Christine Levine's fucking open mic at the Mint on a Tuesday and just just do some bits they haven't heard them in Tucson. Why not? Just I, I I love that bit. I'm not even sick of that. Anyway, we have to. We'll record a special and it'll be on that. Where you been? Uh, I've been well. Obviously, I was on tour with you for a long time. So you know, again, we did we did podcasts while we we're on tour. We did. Did we do any in Asia? We did. This is November, yeah. and we we stopped working. July twenty third. Yes, so we so. did a couple of podcasts, I think, in, in the, on the Asia tour, and then we did a couple in Australia. I didn't do anything in Canada, and then we did a. Did we do any? Pod, we did, did we do? Did we? Yeah, send, we podcasted in the UK. The UK yeah, right. I killed someone else's career. Who was that? Oh no, that's Australia. That's Australia. Um, yeah, and then that was it. And then once you once you said I'm retired, and then I felt okay, good. Now I can relax for a bit. And that was it. So you've done nothing been since July. A bit. I have, I have been working on the film. Well, he got a gal pal, yes. which is yeah, when was... when you never hear from Hennigan when he's he needs money. I'm sure not needs, but uh, he'd prefer if I was working so he could make money for the new squeeze. Hennigan, every one of us has gone through the best friend you lose because of a chick. He used to be here every night. Now he's in a fucking relationship. So Hennigan's been off with his gal pal up yeah, in Yeah, but that Las was coincidental. Nah. If you were working, if you'd said, okay, we're doing this, we're doing that, that would have been incidental. And she would have been in that fucking... Who, who dragged the bag? Hennigan? You don't drag the bag on the road. Yeah, well, she's got a job, so I wouldn't have been Wait, able to. He but. did one time. But what? He, no, but you did it the right way. She showed up the last night of the tour, 
Where? Wherever you guys were at. I can't New remember. York. Yeah. yeah. The, and, this and then story, yeah. Probably, I don't even know if she even went to the show. She did. Okay. And then you guys stayed in New York for a couple yeah. of days. So that's I, the way to do it. Yeah. And she showed up and she sat with Bingo and Joe Vernon. And it was like, she was like part of a Yeah, no, group. that was fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm saying that you, you did disappear to Vegas where she lives I know, for but quite it's, a while. It was a happy coincidence, as we say in philosophy, because I had other things to do in Vegas, which I th- you, you, which you won't talk about. No, but you, no, but it's like there was no natural way to talk about it until just now. Cause I'm one of these people. I hate talking about things I'm going to do. Cause the world is filled with people who talk about things they're going to do. Oh, wait till and you they hear don't when do this podcast them. is better. We're working on it. Right. So, uh, I didn't want to talk about what I'd been working on in February, which was a, a, a low budget horror movie that I made in Vegas mm. or in and around Vegas. I'll just say you went over budget, and that's oh. that's an inside joke <laughs> about some robbery. Oh things. fuck! Yeah. Well, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. A, it's, not a, it's not a secret. I don't mind saying I was staying in an Airbnb that was robbed, burgled, and yeah. How do you how do you know with hindsight that you're staying in a bad area when you have five cop cars outside at four a.m. and no neighbors? Like, no, no one's come out to see what the fuss is. You know, Do you read the reviews of these Airbnbs before you I know, them? but I, I, here's my feeling about Airbnb. I think they can... They, they, it's, it's not like Yelp, I feel. I don't think it's as honest as Yelp. Because Yelp... Oh, because they can judge you back like Uber. But also Yelp, Yelp, the app, don't have skin in the game. They don't care whether you go to... Tachos Tacos or Jose Tacos, because they own the reviews of all tacos. Whereas Airbnb are selling a product that is, that is being reviewed by people. They're actually Reviewing selling them. each other. Yes, like Uber. But, I'll give you five stars. You give me five stars. But the point being that uh, I don't think that the the accommodation I got in Las Vegas, their reviews were accurate. I think that. Airbnb edited them and made it f- seem a far better place than it was. I think Airbnb is a bit of a scam. Oh, and this is just since he got robbed. Mm. Yeah, they were very sketchy about the whole thing. First of all, Hennigan is uh, a, a master of travel. I am. Uh, and I think I'm, uh, I, I'm pretty good, but I'm no Hennigan. But I know when it's a bullshit review. If I read three reviews and they all have the same typo, yeah, yeah. Same. I'm talking about the idea of deleting the negative ones, which oh. gives an entirely different. Because they yeah. have deleted some of my Yelp reviews yeah. when they were ridiculous, and there was at least two uh, TripAdvisor reviews that we tried to put up that you put up that TripAdvisor rejected. Uh, I, I do remember that one that. All right, yeah, I did use like vulgar language or threatening mm-hmm. violence or one of those things. I know it was funny to me, but I can see why they would take that down. But there was one hilarious one about that the the fucking cantina, the bar right at the bottom of Johnny Depp's fucking street. Oh fuck yeah! And then I, I just made this whole yeah. I went there and uh, they had. But it wasn't as good as Johnny Depp's place where I was staying at the... There's just this whole dropping Johnny Depp's name over and over and over. And it, it like it threatened nobody, but it got taken down. That's yeah, funny. and also, the, I was reminded the, from the last tour... Johnny I, Depp has NFL Network. They don't have NFL Network. I should just go back up the hill to Johnny Depp's place, who's my friend whose house I'm staying at. That reminds me of the great view that is still up, which is the Yelp review by you of the Melbourne Botanical Gardens, where you complain about how they don't have NFL in the Melbourne (laughs) Botanical Gardens. (laughs) I have to write a a review. You guys just reminded me, and I was going to ask Henning if you've ever heard of this, since you don't like Airbnb. This VRBO? I I stayed at a place in Phoenix uh, last month called Stay Alfred. Right. It was actually an apartment building, like a uh, expensive, fucking nice apartment uh-huh. building uh, that they just reserve. Yeah, uh, uh, we find a lot for. of those. And uh, but I got there, and you have to put in a code. They have a code box at the front. You have to put in a code What's to open the, code? the door. And uh, 
Then, then once you get in, you have to go over to the parking area to a key box and put in a different code oh, to get right. your key to go open. It gives you like a key fob for the, it's really, you have to use a key fob for the elevators and uh-huh. stuff, but it's really fancy. Except for I get there, I drive four hours to get there and, uh, the code won't work uh-huh. on the front door. And I'm, there's other people standing there too trying to get in and I call them and I'm like, the fucking code is not working. Oh, hold on. Let us get you to our, uh, uh, tech support. Tech support. And then I'm on hold. It was like 45 minutes oh before God. I finally got a hold of somebody. And by then I was yelling at him. What is the problem, sir? I go, the problem is I'm about to piss all over your fucking front door because I'm standing downtown Phoenix. I drove for four hours to get here. Uh, sir, we're so sorry about that. Finally, the, uh, Concierge? The, the website, oh. the, yeah, that gives the codes was down there. Like, what's your code? I go, I can't even tell you my code. Because now the website has gone. This didn't work. Now the website doesn't work, and uh, they're oh, that's on our end. Uh, sorry about that. This is what because uh, a lot of Airbnb type. I call it all Airbnb yeah, yeah. the same way you call all tissues Kleenex, but uh, not branded. But they have on Expedia now, where you just rent yeah. a, a room in a condo, yeah. uh, a, a, not a room, a, a studio apartment, a one bedroom apartment. They're on. Uh, but I don't do that when I'm traveling. Like, I'm not going to fly in, land at 8.30 at night, and then try to figure out a fucking lockbox oh, or man, something where there's nightmare. no front desk because yeah, I'm going to be nobody drunk. there. Yeah, if I was drunk, it would have been worse. One of the times, one of the Airbnbs that we used during Bingo's Coma, the second one, like the the code was wrong on the key box that like real, realtors leave on mm-hmm, doors. Mm-hmm. And then I had a call. I wasn't getting anyone. And then finally, I'm sorry. I, that was a. I gave you the code to a different property. You know they never change those codes. Yeah. <laughs> See, you drive by, no car. Yep. Look through the window. I know no the one's code luggage. To that place. Yeah. Hey, let's hit the pool for an hour. Yeah, well, of course not, because the uh, you, stay you can imagine that, mm-hmm. like, you'll go from one Delta Club to another, and the 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 Wi-Fi login is the same for like a month. And that's an organization that has 60,000 employees. Oh, yeah. Whereas, you know, Stay Alfred or, you know, Hello Judy, uh, <laughs> they, they have three Hello employees Dolly. in the Philippines. So they're not going to fucking be up all night thinking oh, of, you go, well, to, you go to a hotel and the login, oh, what, hey, what's the uh, password for the computer? Oh, it's uh, HI like Hampton in 2014. There you go. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> hey, guys. John Norris from Anchorage. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I want to throw in my Airbnb story. Uh, I was in Seattle, and we one of those places where the lockbox was, like, two blocks away from the building. It was, like, wrapped around a light pole, and you had to go, like, find it like a scavenger hunt. And then when you get in, uh, you get a text right away that says, hey, if anybody who lives in the building asks you, don't mention Airbnb and say you're dropping stuff off. So, like, I had to spend a weekend <laughs> pretending I was, like, dropping my bags off at a room and, like, like multiple times stuck in an elevator of somebody like, oh, did you just move in? Like, uh, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I did. Because when I got the email, I was like, fuck that. I'm not lying for this Airbnb asshole as me fucking playing a scam on his on his neighbors. But then as soon as somebody puts you in a corner, you're like lying immediately. That's how you know that's like, <laughs> that is your, your fight or flight response is just to lie your way out of the situation. Well, what I've learned from Airbnb, or not from them, obviously, is once you get an Airbnb, if you're going to use that property again, they're more than willing to give you their cell phone number and you book it through the guy and no one gets a fee. And uh, yeah, once yeah. you've, hey, you're cool. Uh, I'm cool. The old junior stock yeah, a yeah. bit about getting yeah. something for free off of Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to think murdered? you're going to get murdered? Uh, I got a knife. Do you get a knife? <laughs> <laughs> when uh, After they had trouble getting me into the key compartment, after they got me into the building and they still had those on the phone and they had a hard time finally get into the key. And then the, the fob wouldn't work on the, as I'm trying to use the elevator. Cause I'm like, I'm staying on the phone until I get in the fucking apartment with you guys. Cause it's been a fucking nightmare. I get on and I'm like, I'm, I expect that I'll have some sort of discount for this inconvenience. And the lady's like, absolutely, sir. We're going to give you 25% off your stay. Uh, and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm just stop being a dick. I didn't Man. expect that. That was nice. Good. And then later, we're in there, and it's uh, evening, and uh, uh, I was with my wife and my daughter, and they wanted to watch TV. So I'm like, I don't know, let me figure it out and turn it on. And I spend 30 minutes trying to figure out how to work the TV, and I'm like, 
I'm going to call these guys again because it just says it's not hooked up. And I call them up. Oh, no, do this. All right, do this. I'm on the Sanyo website. He had to go through the fucking tech. He was not even a TV tech support. He was just some uh, dude trying to help me figure out the TV. Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta bring books. That goes, you we can't gotta, figure out someone else's remote goes, control ever. He goes, we gotta. We're gonna have to get somebody on site up there to reconnect your whole thing. It says yeah, none of it's hooked up. And I was like, well, I'm only staying there for one night. I go, uh. So this already happened. I go through the whole shit of what already happened. I go, and they already discounted me 25%. I assume that now since uh, she assured me at the end of my phone call that the rest of my stay would be uneventful and pleasant. I said, I wouldn't describe this as uneventful and pleasant. So does that mean I get additional? Yeah, you get additional 10% off. So I got 35% oh, off the room for six. minor inconveniences. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, I was just seeing what time we're at. because I've. How yeah, is this 11? Break. How is that 11? I don't know. I, I did that, and then I you said know. six, and I'm like, no. Yeah, but well, you know, run I, five. Sure, I didn't know if you did that twice. We need yeah, some you, podcast yeah. semaphores that are looking more... like that. All what right. was that, 11? Yeah, but it's 15. One and five. 15 Wait, that minutes. was six, and I said six after I said 11. Yeah. Six is that. Just That's that. Six. Six. But that and that. Well, I didn't know if you did that twice because what? I know we didn't do six minutes. That's Jesus. not right, Greg Chaley. Because what you're doing me. just now is you're using one hand uh, figuratively to represent the, the number one. The, the tennis ten. column. Yeah, literally like you're, <laughs> like you're writing one. And then you're doing that with the other hand, which is an, like a, a counter thing. Because then you you're using two, X two, two, different, and then two different systems. On two hands. If you, if, you, if you went to Gallaudet University and you're uh, practiced in sign language for the deaf, what you just signed to me was uh, analingus my cadaver. Yes. I I think since you got we're, that one. Since we're willing to discuss it for <laughs> so long, wait, wouldn't wait, wait, it have wait. been easier if you just yelled fifteen? I didn't want to interrupt <laughs> your skip fucking the hand signals. Airbnb. Was it Aiden as cadaver, the sort of hero guy in To Kill a Mockingbird? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a book? <laughs> we'll be right back after uh, these long messages. Shut the fuck up, Meatwig. Meatwig, not now. It's the commercials <laughs> and the shout outs and the thank yous and the everything. Uh, God, I can't remember the guy's name, but you know who you are. He wanted me to mention a friend of uh, his uh, died. They saw us uh, on the uh, we played DeKalb, whatever, last year. Oh, yeah. I don't know what year it is anymore. DeKalb. <laughs> yeah. And then she made it without him to uh, the Chicago show on the same run. Uh, and she uh, she passed away at 33 years old after a, a long history of. Uh, I thought it was gonna be a happy birthday. It is. It is. It gets happy. It gets okay. happy for a killer termite. Gets happy. She she had a history of health issues and surgeries in her youth, and she was lucky to make it 33 years, according to his email. Uh, uh, but she she died uh, of a perforated colon, which. Ugh. Is a way for a killer termite to die. <laughs> I've had those weekends in Alaska where it could have been me. There, but for the grace of God, go me. Chaley, burn the sheets. <laughs> so, Nicole Pettit, as a shout out to you, wherever you may be in this fucking ether. And, uh, and so sorry, sir, I don't remember your name that sent me that, but you didn't say. He said that he was a long email that made me choke up a bit. The death thing does get fucking wearing. I choked up at a fucking Bing Crosby record at the thrift store on a record player that I reset and it started playing Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> you cried it in, in public? I didn't cry. I choked, choked up, up a bit. Yeah. But in a happy way. I was in a good mood. <laughs> uh, it was no death. I think Ben Crosby is also dead, so let's give him a He's shout very out dead. too. Yeah. And Frosty the Snowman fucking melted, I'm sure. <laughs> He'll be back one day. But man, wouldn't you love to give Frosty the Snowman a perforated colon? <laughs> like, I'm sorry to make fun of the perforated colon, but yeah, that's a way for a killer termite to die. It's no way for a killer termite. That was October. To that was uh, it's just over a year ago at uh, at Autos. Mm. Autos. It's not the only autos. We Baltimore. We had the auto bar. 
Uh, yeah, that's different. Yeah, though. now I play a comedy club. <laughs> Once I write an act, I'll probably be back at one of them. Keep sending me emails about your dead friends. Maybe I'll get something funnier <laughs> than perforated colon out of it. Uh, Jeremy Teal sent a... Uh, he sent some stuff. I think he sent more. Someone sent Bibles and socks. I don't, I'm really sorry. I get this stuff, and I forget to write down who exactly sent what. But Jeremy Teal, he's, I think he sent the uh, magnetic sign. He found one on the side of the road that said some gibberish It's right on there. It. But, no, no, don't. Dan Strong sent yeah. the first magnetic sign for the new uh, Funhouse Airport shuttle <laughs> that was made for us. And it says, uh, <laughs> blew a tranny auto repair. <laughs> The old fashioned, you know, silhouette of a, a, a car. Yeah, a, a car on a wrecker, like on a yeah, tow truck. Yeah, he put yeah. the number on it. I'll just, I'm going to use this as an example. He put the number, uh, our area code with 555-1212. Yeah. Which kind of spells this is a goof. So I was gonna, I was gonna try to give them another number they could use. Just use five five five, but they'll use one two one two. Is it five 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 one two one two the old way to get the time from the an old phone? No, a that's uh, no, that's information. I, I think it still might work as information. I know four one one doesn't work one. anymore. Well, not on a cell phone. I don't know what fucking works. Like, when's the last time you that was a thing? You you, dial you, zero. <laughs> I did that once for fun, and I don't think it did anything. Um, when we There's went no to operator, we anymore. went to Hawaii last year, and at the at the airport on the Big Island, there was a payphone. <laughs> and JC goes, "Give me a quarter." I go, "I don't even I don't have a quarter." And they go, "Who are you going to call in the mainland that is going to cost just a quarter?" <laughs> so she had she called Becky Becker and had Becky Becker call the payphone, <laughs> and then said, "Hey, you called me in a payphone." <laughs> It was just such a, a, a walk down memory lane. Or did you ever do that shit when you were a, a kid, where you would call collect, and it was it would just record you your voice? Nah. Like you want to make a collect call, and you'd say, uh, "Hey, this is Doug. I'm at the airport. My fl flight is late." So they would just oh, instead of your name, yeah, like, instead yeah. of saying your name as yeah. the recording, you just go, "This is Doug. My plane is late, so don't pick me up. I'll call you again." And then they would just reject the charges. Yeah, I, I will not accept the charges from man, my man. The like, fucking <laughs> tales we could tell these kids that don't give a fuck. <laughs> What's a record? <laughs> so Dan Strong, Jeremy Teal, thank you. Uh, I, I, if there's people I forget, I'll try to remember next week. It's uh, on the it's on the 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 uh, transit now, so it stays there until another one knocks it off. <laughs> You know, lift mode, Chaley? Yes. Yes. Got you through a whole uh, haunt season. More than that. I just had to, uh, well, we just did a little drive out to uh, Phoenix to, to go see uh, some comedy. Yeah. It, driving it, around. Yeah, you could yeah. drive to Doug Benson. Yeah. Doug loves movies. Jeff Tate. Jeff was, Tate yeah. was a guest. It was great. Some sets. I think I had my first drink. In uh, with a two drink minimum, want to follow it's the early rules. Thanksgiving this year, and uh, Tracy told me that you're going to actually cook a turkey, even though you, you're vegan this year, yeah, as well as other things. And uh, Tracy threw up all over a bed. We don't want to leave that out of the podcast. After Doug loves movies, <laughs> they went and had some sushi and not sangria, but what is that? Awful sake, sake. That's great. It's fucking. It's it's liquid. Uh, Heartburn. It's acid reflux For you. in a s ceramic. Well, Doug, you know you got you got to in moderation. We only well, had seven bottles, <laughs> and she threw it up all over the bed. No, in my cupped hand. <laughs> well, you sent me a picture of the vomit that was <laughs> overflowing that, that, from your cupped yeah, hand. Yeah. <laughs> your cupped hand overfloweth, sir. <laughs> I should only make sure she eats so <laughs> one handful of food. <laughs> So it doesn't spill over. <laughs> How much did you eat? Did you eat Lift one mode. <laughs> Lift mode, uh, they're a new sponsor. You've been using them for a while. Oh, yeah. And uh, they just found pay dirt being in bed with us. <laughs> well, we finding pay dirt has nothing to do with your wife's vomit. <laughs> no, but the next day, I mean, I, I didn't drink that much. But the next day, you know, I had to drive back. Just uh, wake up in the morning before I hit the uh, the free lobby coffee. 
And uh, I don't need to drink that much coffee because I do a little L-theanine and caffeine. Well, that's what I was getting to. I was saying, because you're cooking Thanksgiving, now you're cooking vegan for you. You're cooking turkey for me. Mm. And the other people will just bring, probably all of them will bring the exact same shit. Yeah. You're going to be doing lift mode to get through Thanksgiving because <laughs> you're cooking vegan. You're cooking this. And speaking of L-theanine. Uh, we get a note from the sponsor after my first read, and they complimented me on pronouncing L-theanine correctly. So mm. I say L-theanine not just on the podcast. I say it to perfect strangers at the grocery <laughs> store. Hey, have you tried L-theanine? L-theanine? And no one but the sponsor has complimented me so far. But it's in play. L-theanine. Lift mode. Pills. They're pills. Don't take pills if you don't know what the fuck is in them. You know what? That's going to land you dead with a perforated colon. You need to go with someone you can trust. The people at Lift Mode are sick of all the bullshit health supplements being sold today. <laughs> but they do. They sell only the purest supplements they can find, and you'll know exactly what's in them. Because they tell you what's in the fucking thing. Caffeine is in it. They also tell you that the L-theanine helps, uh, like, like mellow out the, the Take effects. Take the, the edge uh, off of the caffeine. caffeine. So you're awake, but you're not sketched out. You're not yeah. picking at scabs, thinking <laughs> that there's, there's little bugs running under your skin while, while you're at work. <laughs> or editing a podcast late at night because we waited too long sitting around watching TV. Listen, you don't have to read this. You just have to try it. Try it risk-free. If you don't like a lift mode product, you can return it within 90 days for a full refund. Use coupon code STANHOPE to save 20% off your first order. Lift mode L-theanine capsules and dozens of other supplements are available on Amazon, Walmart, and liftmode.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure, or prevent any disease. Lift Mode is a proud sponsor of the Doug Stanhope Podcast. This is a sponsor. You have to guide me through this, Chaley, because you know more than anyone. I'll, 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 do, I'll do this, Doug. In the funhouse right now, show me where the router is. That we all connect to the internet in this room. Is it that? No, that's an air conditioner. Is it that? That's the big screen TV. Is it that big thing over there? That's Is where the booze and the ice comes from, Doug. It's over on the wall, and it's it's sitting right into one of the outlets, and there's a little nightlight under it, too, that you can turn it on and off from your app on your phone. You don't even know where it is, and it's working all the time. In fact, the whole system we had here, we had three different products, different companies. And I've whittled it down to only Aero now. We've got three houses that are using the same uh, Wi-Fi connection. But that's very impressive. It's a blanket of Wi-Fi. How does Wi-Fi work? <laughs> How do the lights turn off and on? Charlie, can you come up here? I'm scared. Bingo is on vacation. <laughs> I'm scared. That's the, the one thing that Arrow wanted to do. They wanted to create a fast, reliable connection in every room of your house. That means multiple access points throughout the house. You know what? There's one in your room, in your uh, your main house, Van Dyke. Uh, Another, you don't know? It's following you my no, thoughts. You have no idea where it's at. It's no. so great. So if I said, hey, go find it, you wouldn't. I'd have to tell you exactly where I put it. It's it's just plugs into the wall. There's no wires. There's nothing. It's a beacon. It all connects to Where? No, the little house. That's where the main one is. It's spread out. There's a I think net. It, I think you're There's giving a, away company secrets <laughs> There's here. There's a Wi-Fi net over your entire compound here. And it's all from Arrow. I've gotten is rid of all the other Is that why there's so many equipment. homeless people camping around my gate? <laughs> Those are security guards. <laughs> Hey, and uh, now they have the, sec uh, the second generation uh, product, which is more speed and range in the same high quality and elegant design, invisible to Doug Stanhope's eyes. Oh, I'd find it if like the lights went out during a, a, a monsoon storm. Yeah. I would probably blame that and kick it. <laughs> You'd have to find it dumb. first. Yes. Hey, you know small. what? It installs in minutes. You download an app. There's three steps. And one of the steps is download the app. <laughs> I mean, that's how quick it is. It's really fucking good. Still out of my league, but keep selling it. <laughs> hey, the, the single router model just uh, isn't practical anymore, and that's why we had multiple routers around here. Those are all going up on eBay, by the way. I'm getting rid of those. I'm just dumping them. And then uh, the uh, you manage your system from the app. Totally simple. I'm not even going to bother you with looking at it, Doug, because you will just gloss I'm over I'm looking at it right now, and I see <laughs> the edges are rounded, so it wouldn't perforate your colon. 
<laughs> hey, and you know what? You're also that's gonna... not guaranteed. Hang on. Let me, let me go back to the last read. <laughs> These statements have not been evaluated by the fruit. This is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. Okay. The, the beauty of the, of the Arrow app is you can manage your whole system right from your phone. You can check status, check out the connected devices. You can name the devices so I can see when someone is uh, connected here at the, in the funhouse. You can check the internet speed at any time. It also logs what your speed is so you can see if it's going down or going up. And you can even create and share a guest network, which we don't even need to do that because we're all here under one beautiful Wi-Fi blanket. Warm and cuddly. Hey, Meatwig just spoke up, if you could hear that. Hey, they also have incredible customer support. They uh, guarantee a Wi-Fi expert within 30 seconds of a call. Hey, also, there's the Aero Plus service. It's an add-on to uh, the regular uh, purchase of the devices. And for uh, a nominal fee, you can get a subscription service, which offers protection from malicious sites. You can block sites. That's good for the kids. <laughs> you can also uh, block ads. It's got an ad blocker, a password manager, and VPN protection. Oh, this is my favorite part. Never think about Wi-Fi again. <laughs> That's what they told me to say, and I'm saying it. Check. Never think about Wi-Fi again. Let Chaley do the thinking, and you get $100 off the Aero base unit and two beacons package. And one year of Aero Plus. Visit Aero.com, E-E-R-O.com slash Stanhope, and at checkout, enter promo code Stanhope. Aero, life's too short for bad Wi-Fi. A lot of people are asking me how can I afford to uh, to retire at such an early age, and I'll tell you how. MyBookie.ag. <laughs> I am a professional sports prognosticator. I bet on everything with MyBookie.ag. Yeah, sure. Rub it in my fucking face that I fell to seven and three with my failure of the Patriots at Tennessee. But you know what? I like Tennessee. And uh if they hadn't have fucked up their helmet, getting rid of that fucking powder blue, Jesus, I'd love them even more. So my pick this week at mybookie.ag is Carolina at Detroit. Carolina's going to crush him. Right now it's at four and a half, minus four and a half for Carolina. But you can bet anything at mybookie.ag. It's college basketball, college football, and there's way too much. There's just way too much shit. There's NBA, NHL custom props, even esports, you name it. Whether you're an expert or a rookie, you should be betting at MyBookie. Uh, sign up this week and MyBookie will give you a 50% deposit bonus to jumpstart your bankroll. It's a great way to bank even more money when you win. Also, make sure to follow at BetMyBookie on Twitter. At BetMyBookie on Twitter. And tell them that uh, it was the at Doug Stanhope that sent you there. So they know that people are listening. Because we don't do this shit just to fucking amuse you. I could be making you as rich as I am right now. <laughs> Seven and three. That pays the bills around here. Since my mortgage is paid off. <laughs> and I live in a shit town. <laughs> and vodka's on special. <laughs> Nine bucks a plastic handle jug vodka. Yeah, I'm paying for that with my bookie.ag. They're keeping me afloat. So yes, follow them on Twitter at BetMyBookie. They personally respond to every mention and DM. And if they don't, tell me. I, they keep my ad copy read in check, so I'm going to keep them in check about responding to every DM. Uh, not to mention, they've given away uh, more than $10,000 in free money to their followers this football season. You'll be the first to know as soon as new odds and props are posted. Don't miss out on one of the best bets to bet on sports this year. Log on to MyBookie right now and use promo code STANHOPE to get 50% deposit bonus. That's right. MyBookie.ag, promo code STANHOPE. You play, you win, you get paid. This is not even this week's read, but seriously, buy a priceless pillow. Always... Uh, promo code stanhope it is so good bingo went on vacation for her birthday uh to the east coast to see her dumb friends who now have babies <laughs> and uh but she always takes a pillow to sleep on the plane and she i made her put it in a different colored pillowcase put it in a bright pillowcase so you remember it don't leave it on yep. the fucking plane dummy 
Or in the hotel. But or at someone's house under a, she's a dumb baby. She's flying back right now. If she can make it from her <laughs> connection in Salt Lake back to Tucson, I'm getting my priceless pillow back. So, yeah, do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm doing this just to tell you. I'm doing This is a pro bono read because the pillow is that good. So, yeah, go to pricelesspillow.com. Put in the promo code Stanhope, get 30% off. Blah. Hey, uh, the holiday season is coming up. So what we're doing, since I uh, have been making so much money gambling on sports <laughs> and not working the road, but I still travel, we have a bat. To say we have a backlog of stolen hotel Bibles that we only sell on the road this holiday season, since I'm not on the road, we will be selling stolen hotel Bibles inscribed and personalized to you or your loved one at the holiday season. If you really love Jesus Christ that much, you want to celebrate his fake birthday, celebrate it with a stolen Bible from Doug Stanhope and the Doug Stanhope podcast crew starting on Black Friday, which is next week, 23rd through Christmas. No. Wait, shit. We, we want to guarantee delivery by Christmas. So you got from November 23rd through December 17th, and we'll get it to you. Because you got to sign them. Yeah, you just tell us what you want, uh, who you want it signed to, and it will say this Bible has been stolen exclusively for your name here. <laughs> XXX. And I will <laughs> sign it with my own uh, 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 sh booze shivering scrawl. And uh, what, what could make a better uh, holiday gift? Well, buy other shit from our website. Yeah. Let's get back to this podcast. Hold on. This is good podcast. But what? What are you? While supplies you last. While supplies last. Yes. Yes. Because we might run out. Yeah, we'll tell you if we. We'll pull the thing down if we run out. This is the only time. Oh, we've done so this. this is like. Uh, uh, what do you call that in sales? Where you, you, you not sizzle the fucking thing? It's a uh, loss leader. No, god damn it. A scam. I was trying to come <laughs> up with a, a suspension of disbelief yesterday, and I couldn't come up with it, and now it actually works here. Suspend disbelief, like, oh, we're going to run out any second. Oh, we're, so you, we're close. Okay. They're just fucking heavy. I guess it seems like there's more because they're heavy. Yeah. Yep. Stolen Bible. Let's get back to this. This is a good podcast. I like this one. All right. Bye. Well, let's uh, let's put Where that out bingo? there. Bingo? Where, Andy. Uh, he's ran off? Yeah, we don't want him coming in on this. Oh. He's changing his, <laughs> he's changing his clothes for like the uh, fifth time this week. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be here to ask you. We're, 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 we're back. We're back. Oh, right, we're back. I'd rather just text him. What's the? Yeah. All right, we're we're back live. Oh, we're talk, talk we're just on. talking about. No, Andy can't come in for this. He'll talking talk of travel, something that I know is was close to your heart. I want you to know that I do work, do act on your every wish. I genuinely reached out to, and I need to see who it was. The points guy, to try oh, yeah. to try to get a response. I just just put this out there. I have no, you know, maybe they're not listeners. The points guys' responses from two different people were some of the most inadequate and helpless and worthless I have ever encountered in all my years of business. Whoever is working marketing and social media for the points the guy, the points guy is a guy are, we follow. Are, I, I, are I, worthless. I, I, I follow the points guy who's got like eighty billion followers. Yeah, he just knows how to. You know, grift the system with airline yeah. points. And he presents a website in a very straightforward uh, manner. But, and there's also uh, Renee's points. Yeah, and there's Million Mile, what's it, what's it called? One Million Miles a Dodge mm. or something like that. There's a few of these websites, if you're into travel, that you follow. And uh, I was just so disappointed. I don't want to get into the specifics of the communications, but it genuinely it was like dealing with fucking bumbling amateurs. And you, no don't, but you don't think it was the points guy himself? No, Brian, whatever his name is. I don't no, know. definitely not. Again, he employs stooges. Well, he makes a fucking good living, but oh, we're yeah. way off topic for anything anyone listening wants to hear. No, I thought we were talking about travel. <laughs> well, why, 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 we're talking about sending you... Back to L.A. Oh, yeah. in a 1975 Pacer with 45, less than 4,500 original yeah, clear miles. The, clear the roadway, baby. It's It's been in AJ's uh, garage. Which isn't a euphemism. And oh, it's, yeah. it doesn't even have a door on it. I've, I've driven past oh, the really? Pacer. It's a carport. It's dusty. 
Point is, it's a, basically a brand new 1975 Pacer. And it will be for sale in Vegas slightly, but most importantly, LA. Yeah, the, 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 the whole point, Brian will drive that back from here because there's more people that will be interested in that, that in makes LA. Sense. You know what else makes sense? Are we all allowed mm-hmm. to take out life insurance policies on Brian before he leaves here in the Pacer to drive it? Well, Doug, Doug probably could because <laughs> I've looked into this sort of thing, <laughs> believe it or not. And you'd have to you have to declare an, an evidence a specific interest in that person's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it would cost you money if I you just, lost him. I as just a thought manager, this right? is the champagne room of death pool. Celebrity death pool where we all take out life insurance policies on each other. Podcast or Bisbee, just people who have been on the podcast. I'm not sure I feel like driving that car now. (laughs) I, I for one, love this idea, Stanhope. Do you like this? We all take insurance policies out on each other, hoping the other one dies first. It does give you, uh, what what do they call that in the court of law? Motive. Motive, thank you. Yeah. Weird that everyone died of head trauma. That's strange. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so that... Hennigan never told us... Whoa. What he's now, you can tell us what you've been working on since February of I, last year. I, I shot a low budget horror movie in and around Las Vegas in the month of uh, February 2018 with the help of. Fuck, uh, we did. I, I know Jaylen we talked about this because he had to walk. Brother. He was wearing uh, oh, a yeah. military uniform, U.S. military uniform. After he got robbed and had to move into a, a hotel, so he's walking across the casino floor in U.S. military garb. Six a.m. from the shoot, was he's it in like he's, a Francis Ford Coppola. He's in costume now situation. He, he's, <laughs> he's in really a wardrobe, deep. but everyone's thanking him for his service, <laughs> and he can't reply back because he will never do his American accent. But the, but the, the, but it, it was truly awful in terms of it, it gave you an. Like, it gave you an insight into what somebody in military uniform has to put up with. <laughs> like, because... All the congratulations listen, in the free first class this, seats. This guy... Fuck th- you. As I was getting in the elevator at the Palazzo, this guy runs up and tries to give me a an unopened tin of Budweiser. And is like... Can. Yeah, can. Sorry. Going, hey man, it's for you. Have one. I was like, no, thank you. Yeah. I was like... But in an American accent, it was highly convincing. Yeah. Say it. But, say it in an American. Just but, say no thank you, America. Thanks, and, man. And, no, One time. No. Fuck you. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, see, this is uh, the, the um, and it was just, and he was, and, and, he, and then he genuinely, you could tell, wanted to say fuck you for not taking that tin yeah. or can. Do you not appreciate my... And, and, and instead he just went, I guess you don't drink then. Yeah. And wandered off. And it's like, yeah, you, fuck you. I'm free from your service. Yeah. <laughs> Probably didn't do nothing anyway. Yeah. I, have, I, I wrote a Twitter joke one, uh, whenever, whatever day they tell you happy uh, fucking Memorial Monday, Federal, Mo- Veterans uh, Day or whatever. This is a while back, but it says, uh, when strangers thank me for my service, I always respond by telling them that, uh, or by apologizing for accidentally shooting a bunch of guys in a friendly fire incident. I said, it's not true, but at least it makes the situation awkward for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for your service. Hey, thanks. Uh, hey, I'm sorry about when I accidentally shot all them dudes. Yeah, and I thought I was, they were bad guys. And, I, and again, I also got later on another incident where in the in the movie there's an, there was an elderly actress and so I, I would put her in an Uber or a Lyft every night or whatever one night this guy turns up uh, uh, a very nice Uber or Lyft driver I forget which it was Bonnie that was her name great actor goes in the back of the car I'm again I'm in outfit and he's picking her up from like anonymous looking buildings he, he doesn't know there's a um, a, sl- a, a small film studio back there or whatever and without even hesitation, he rolls down his window and doesn't just say thank you for your service. He gives me a speech about <laughs> how grateful he is about people going overseas and putting their lives on the line. And at that point, I was just feeling very honest. And I said, it's all right, this is just a film outfit. We're making a movie in there. 
Oh, I thought you said fuck you, fuck and, the NFL players. And the look, <laughs> the look of dejection and hatred on his face when I said that, and that's when I decided, no, no, from now on, you just <laughs> go with the flow. You do not say, oh, I've just been filming. I would have said, thank you. I am wearing this outfit for a film where we are portraying the heroes that you're talking about. So thank you for supporting our film. And then I would have plugged the film, told them where they could eventually buy it once you'll eventually talk about it. Because I'm always branding. Because I had a good manager back... Before I was retired <laughs> comedy, I had the best manager. At yeah, Earth. well. Uh, well, okay. So this movie, because mm-hmm. uh, I want to get to this list. We oh, did yeah. this weeks back when you were still disappeared. I was on, I was retired. And I, ta- I, 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 I had a list of things that okay. in my retirement, other than stand-up comedy, okay. I might do. Okay, but go I ahead. want you to get to the end. Is there, a, is, is there a plug for this film? No, because again, in the same vein of... You don't, I don't like to talk about something that's not being completed. All that's happening now is we're in post-production. You know what that means. It's an endless fucking check this, do that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So when oh, and a- your editing people are in Vegas yes. with your squeeze. Yes, so my squeeze. Out. I picked up a squeeze. So uh, I have a lovely girlfriend in Las Vegas called Aubrey. And so it's a happy coincidence. Wait, sometimes she's called that or named that? I do believe I mentioned this because you emailed me. Cam girl, cam girl Call name. that sounds you like brought, a stripper name, you bro. Don't her, say that. Say named that. I don't know what wait, they say. Wait, he brought her on. Uh, they went to Hong Kong for yes. a vacation because yes. he found this steel deal on Delta. Amazing. Com. Thanks to the points guy, by the way, which is why you get so infuriated because when commu- he's wrong, you know, when his communication people are such spaniels. But anyway, <laughs> so he she'd never flown first class because she's fifteen years old. Uh, <laughs> that would be a callback, but I have to figure uh-huh. out which podcast is yeah, which. Yeah, keep going. Uh, so yeah, I'm, when Bingo and I first got together, when she was at her full state of mental illness, like she hardcore, and I she went to. Uh, tape her album in Portland and I get her she's like she called me up there's a telephone in the bathroom <laughs> and I remember the first time I had a telephone in my bathroom in Grand Junction Colorado on a triple gig <laughs> calling my mother there's a telephone in the bathroom so yeah I I, I he brought for, her on first cl- international for, first dur- class during retirement oh, again this is the important thing but it's thanks to the points guy because the points guy Brian not his staff Brian alerted me to the fact Spaniels <laughs> alerted me to the fact that Delta was closing their route or route uh, from Hong Kong to Root. to Seattle and they were having like a fire sale for points just for points on that route so the, and it was and I'd been saving up bunches and bunches of points and Point being, I got a phenomenal deal for first class return. And, Round trip, and it was my birthday weekend. So that, so I booked which it. Which he will never, never even talk tell about. You it's his birthday. That's right. He hates his birthday. I hate my he, birthday. Now that he's got a fucking nineteen-year-old girlfriend in Las Vegas. Uh huh. I'm glad she's oh, aged my birthday. four Let's years. For she's legal now. Tour around the world. <laughs> so we booked the flight and. I didn't tell her until we got to the airport. And he tells me, as soon as she takes the left when you get on the plane, instead of the right to seats, where you get the whole full down, laid down, uh, what's that Woody Allen movie, oh, Sleeper? Fuck. Sleeper, yeah. You get the fucking Woody Allen Sleeper. And let's, not the chloroforming, but over let's, that let's Vietnamese say, girl's face. Let's just say she embraced first class wholeheartedly. Oh my God. Oh, you, oh my God. Oh. If we, I don't care if we've talked about this behind your back because you haven't been around. Tell it again. So again, we're we're sitting in, we're, we're sitting in sort of like <laughs> connected seats in the middle, and I'm and uh, this, the flight's been it's a fucking thirteen hour flight. Hey, so, hey, for my listeners who've only flown, in, in, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on international, I'm one of them. I can say it. A middle seat together means 
you have a wall separating you, yeah. and you're both laying down. Those are the two middle seats, our two private personal, area. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like fucking, cubicles. Yeah, it's a tiny hotel room. So I'm sitting there, and I'm watching whatever movie I'm watching. I think I was watching Ready Player One, which <laughs> I found slightly disappointing. But um, I, and I, 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 out of the periphery, you know, you're aware of movement and stuff. And I, and I look over uh, uh, the girlfriend, Aubrey, and she is peeking over the wall. She's doing, she's watching The Lion King and she has headphones on and she's commentating on it out loud to the entire cabin like she's watching live sports. She's doing color commentary, not <laughs> noticing how loud she is. She, this is a 14 and a half hour flight. She just went back to 15 yeah. in my mind. <laughs> she, she, I, I took my I took I took my headphones off. I took my headphones off, and she's shouting, "Go, no, Mufasa, no, he's an asshole, don't do that." <laughs> and then when it, when the music came on, the songs, she is singing along karaoke style. Oh. And so I I tried to I genuinely I was genuinely like trying to waver down like. Shh, Were you stop. confused? I don't know. I was going to stop. Shh, like, keep it. Like, and she, all she would ever do is look at me for a second, and then go back to dancing and, and singing along. Was she on? Was she medicated on? No, flight? she was hammered. Have you ever- <laughs> she was fucking have, hammered. Have you ever and, seen that? A lot of listeners are saying, "Is she black?" Have you- Why? <laughs> She's talking in a movie theater. Have you? <laughs> It just for what there's a uh, what is that TV that Netflix uh, Arrested Development right where he accidentally dates a retarded girl and oh, then he figures <laughs> <laughs> oh shit I'm accidentally dating a retarded girl that's guy. that's a, a Mr. Comedy. F I want to get back to because the end of Brian's story is brilliant I would get out of this <laughs> oh yeah it's it's subtly brilliant but I want to because you said that I don't know if this is urban legend but I know the comic who took credit for it and i go why he was like a family friendly act and touted himself as that but then he tells us this story oh yes about him and his buddy early days in his drinking days you know how everyone who doesn't drink their only good stories are about when they drank well they were in i think chicago and they it was last call and they're trying to get some pussy and they're striking out every which way But then they met this one girl that was hammered, and they were hammered, and they were staying in a van because early days on the road, sometimes you sleep in your van. And uh, they both fucked her in the van. And in the morning, they wake up sober. She's still drunk. Nope. They realize she's retarded. Oh! (laughs) And... Whatever the progression of the story is, it ends with they ended up dropping her off in Little Italy because she kind of looked Italian. <laughs> they didn't because they couldn't call the cops. Both, she's dripping with their DNA. <laughs> oh my god! Where'd they find her? At a club, There's some place they went after a show. You know, young comics. You looking to meet somebody? Yeah, yeah. Like, did you have a number? Can I still get a hold of her? What's the deal? She she still looks as young. (laughs) That's my favorite Andy Andrews joke. Where is Andy? I don't know. Thankfully, somewhere else. But anyway, as his joke, his joke was, uh, is one thing parents of retarded children never hear is uh, take a lot of pictures. They grow up quick. So, yeah, so, so back to where we yeah, so were. <laughs> eventually, when I realized that, you know, Aubrey was going to fly, you know, the friendly skies all the way, uh, I just literally pressed the sort of recline button on my seat and like... Full just, recline. Yeah, like sunk beneath the waves, genuinely hoping they wouldn't now associate me with her. <laughs> and therefore, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get cut off or something because she's about to be, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah, he distanced himself from the problem. He, yeah. Probably like I would with Bingo if she's overly medicated. Just point to the stewardess flight attendant, F.A., and uh, go, what's up with that? Can I, <laughs> can I switch seats? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so I went to Hong Kong. 
<laughs> oh, that was good. And that uh, explains where you've been for three months, not worrying about my career. Well, you said you're retired. I am retired, but okay. not as. I was, you know what? Sometimes I'm breaking up with you just so you chase me down the street. <laughs> going, I can't live without you. Didn't even try. <laughs> I retired you, motherfucker. I know, but you wouldn't get the full retirement. See, the whole your whole thing about the retirement thing was, I want to be able to, you kept saying, I want to be able to look at my calendar and see nothing ahead. I, all right? So you wouldn't get that effect if I was, like, fucking calling you every weekend going, how are you feeling today? Well, uh, I've really enjoyed not having anything on my calendar. Oh, good. Except for the fact that I know that that is going to be either... I die, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna have to go back on the ah. go back on the road. I'm gonna have to. Okay. So here, I'm gonna I'll, I'll cherry pick the list because we already did this on a podcast. Mm -hmm. But I'll cherry pick the ones that I really think about. Obviously, we have to tape the new special. Correct. And we've already talked about the the towns that we can do warm up for and or film. Yeah. Uh, we we're all leaning towards Vegas, including you. Yep. And again, I mean, the, the, we can do international warm up. But a lot of international places we've not been to. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I, I need to not have to. Scandinavia is yeah. what you're talking yeah. about, and I would have to change a lot of shit, uh, even just small bits that I wouldn't want to practice in a place where I, I change understand. Shit. Okay, so like just like a going, vacant go, go place, on. Anchorage, Hawaii. Right, so Minnesota, Phoenix. But you've got the point being that's the, on your list. Tape the new special. Yeah, that's a, that's a obvious. What one. you're we witnessing is a behind the scenes look <laughs> at what happens in a business meeting between Doug Stanhope <laughs> and his manager Brian Hedigan. Ah, fuck you! I quit, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do some voiceover. Sorry, uh, that, was very, that was very funny. I had some. I have silly ones here, so uh -huh. I'm going to skip past them. Ba, ba, ba. This is way more formal than it normally is. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to say no, no, no more refunds. Oh, I still, oh, yeah, yeah. I still want to do no more refunds. I've got. I've got a different angle on that. We right, can't well, talk we'll about, talk on about it. And this, I can't talk about the uh, subject, but it's that. Uh, uh, Just show me it. Uh, it's that that screenplay sometimes I it's a oh, not yeah, 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 we can't speak. talk about that but that's that's a great idea uh, we've already talked about not talking about that right okay and then uh theo i think i know who you are I, I'll, theo? I'll email you back so well, we talked about it and then this guy says hey i write all the time i've never fucking got any work but i think i know who he is I think I met him at a tgi fridays after a fucking gig at a funny bone on the southeast that is a Post. hell of a resume, sir. And I said, hey, well, it was back in the Death Valley party <laughs> days. Whoa. Whoa. It's the TGI same guy. Days. I know he's been emailing me. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't even tell you about it. But because you'll ridicule him, I wouldn't ridicule. Well, uh, the book we want to write. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Don't mention it. Though. <laughs> I did. We already mentioned it, but I didn't give details. Good. But I, I said uh, that Chaley could do some color work in the middle, just passages of. Of his, he took copious <laughs> notes and diaries forever that could be just to break up chapters mm. between me and you, and I love that idea. Uh, fuck, I don't know if I talked about that. It's that one. Sometimes these meetings can be less revealing and not comedy. very oh, entertaining that, oh, yeah. to a podcast you, audience. Oh, comedy, comedy. Oh, yeah, don't yeah. mention that. Yeah, I think I might have already on a podcast that went out. <laughs> I'm but sure we have. But the good thing is uh, no one's going to steal that idea. No. It feels like a real meeting, and Chad and I are just here to like look at contracts and be like, yeah, that looks good. That looks legit. <laughs> I'm doing commentary. I don't know what the fuck you're here <laughs> for. We keep <laughs> mentioning. Someone tells me to leave. <laughs> Unbookables 3, we keep mentioning. Uh, Rouse Tapes will talk But you know, I already that. spoke to that company, and they said they'd be fine going ahead with Unbookables as long as we recast. <laughs> I don't, like fresh I don't unbookables <laughs> no, but the point, no, 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 but, no but the point being that, you know these, this, this is a company I can't tell you who but they were very they're, let's call them a comedy aficionado company right and they basically just said for, for example that like Inman was played out they'd already heard it all therefore everyone would have to be recast that's all they said we'll talk about that later you sound serious, and I can't tell. It's been a long, a dizzying day. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so uh, the rest are just nonsense things right, that we, okay. we we hear around the house that are always present. Oh, yeah. The prank calls we yeah. talked about. We should yeah. do a fucking prank call CD just for ourselves. And Yeah, we could sell the shit out of that. Yeah. We can, do we, we can sell it on 8-track. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Sure. Are you sure you don't want to do it on wax cylinder? I mean, the, you got uh, a guy. You got a cylinder guy. Yeah. And so, again, get Jack well, White on the phone. What are your ideas for our future? Well, don't it tell people on the fucking podcast because all my ideas are gold. <laughs> all right. So you have some ideas yes. that are not in yes. my silly list. Yes, th- I do. Uh, I thought you were on. Um, I thought you wanted to talk about because I did a sober August. And you oh did, yeah, yeah. You did a. Uh, on your own yeah we talked we we mentioned this but I, we haven't heard your side of the story yeah you did 30 days we talked about hennigan does i mean uh chaley does this randomly does he he'll just go sober or vegan really? he's vegan right now but it's not like a, a, a life choice it's a month choice you know when you got things to do uh-huh. and you don't want to sleep in till two the next day right you decide that like an adult the night before oh. to not drink. I always wake up at like fucking six a.m. anyway. Just cause yeah. But yeah, I mean, I so, so, being sober for a month I mean, for a month isn't that difficult. I found this how was much right do you wet, drink we, regularly though? We had just coming Is off it? the UK Europe tour. Yeah, I was yeah. I was like my man, my uh, liver. And it was like the last night when I was yeah. crying because a cat showed. I was crying at a book and a cat made me happy. It was we're th- that serotonin low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So you, uh, we I took, yeah, I, yeah, I took, I yeah, I, yeah, I took into all of uh, August off, and it was kind of dull but effective. That was really that's all I've got to say about it. It was just dull and effective. I felt better after it. That was it. Did you, well, you? I can't imagine you as someone who, when you're not drinking, craves alcohol. You're not a booze shakes kind of guy. No, I'm not. But I don't have much to offer in a social situation, shall we say. In the sense that you're thinking about uh, how uh, ev- drinking makes everything um, uh, socially acceptable. Like you can do things you can't. For month of Oct- of August, I drove to Safeway at night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you disconnect even more, Brian? As I, sober? Well, well, yeah. Or the girlfriend is taking me meet up with these friends of mine. And I just go no. Yeah. Like that makes I, sense. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't possibly do that sober. I don't normally drink. Uh, here is usually when I drink. That's why I'm so proud of myself because I'm like a non-drinker who mm-hmm. then drinks with professionals on a like once or twice a month basis mm-hmm. you're keeping but pace with the the lead runner in yeah, a marathon yeah yeah, yeah i'm like, doing all right yeah, i'm like i'm like the bert kreischer of uh drinking <laughs> but chad you're like 10 feet but, tall and you're drinking with a bunch of five footers that's that's true too i mean i, I take all that but uh these guys were, i was gonna do sober with these guys and uh-huh. try to cut back on smoking weed and stuff and i realized i'm doing that twitch stream thing and it's a social right aspect i'm drinking more this month than i ever have I've gone through bottles and bottles of booze. That's right. Twitch TV uh, slash HD HD underscore underscore fatty. Yeah, drink with Chad. Drive them down to your level, assholes. (laughs) It's a... It, it's really a niche market. Like you created a, a unique niche market, and then I'm scavenging the lowest bottom of the barrel niche market from niche your market. crappy niche market that you've got. And it's pretty nice because it's like everybody who needs therapy but won't go, I get to talk to while I play video games and yeah, drink. So I it's fun. I think this is what they call the long tail. <laughs> Hennig- yeah. Hennigan yeah. doesn't listen to the podcast, so he doesn't know. That I don't we've drive talked. anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I don't listen to the podcast either. The point is we have talked about, uh, like, you have to, well, first of all, the key to sober whatever month yeah. is staying the fuck out yes. of those situations yes. where there's been time fucking, that, that hallo- it wasn't even Halloween. It was the, the Wednesday, uh, the, the Saturday. Be- uh-huh. The point is a million people came up through the haunted house and I'm like, yeah, I'm getting fucking hammered because exactly. I can't talk to these people. And that was, by the way, when Sober October for you kicked him, that's actually, I actually f- d- almost decided much more consciously to back off because if I thought, if I put anything into your head about writing or touring or, I know that that will set you off. Trigger. Yes, it's trigger. So it's like, I, I've been very considerate. Well, and just, when I did uh, uh, 30 Days in the Hole, what, five years ago, four years ago? Mm-hmm. 
I made it six weeks of essentially not smoking and being sober, mm -hmm. not not drinking. Both of those Two times, drinks. I would say the same thing as Hennigan. As little as we ever talk or communicate, it's even more so whenever you're doing something like that. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, you don't I listen don't to the know. podcast, but I said, hey, don't worry, Chad will be back eventually. He just knows what a miserable cunt I'm going to be while I'm sober, so he knows when to fuck off when other people don't. And a yes. lot of them don't. No, I know. I, yeah, it's diff 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 difficult not to know what to do about that. But, uh, yeah, uh, you did. Wait a minute, I want to say something. You did read Julie Seabold's book. Yes, I did. Uh, actually, I read, I, I missed the last 13 pages uh -huh. because I was trying to finish it in time to give it to that kid in the fucking mental lockup who oh, killed yeah. his mother. And I, so I gave it to him because he's a fledgling comic. Right. But and, you said uh, you liked it. Yeah, I did. Oh, good. I did. Yeah. I was pleased she wrote it. It's a good thing to do. Yeah. Julie Seabaugh. Or sea bubbles. Mm -hmm. What else have we got on the that we can talk? Well, that, about? That, no, that's it. I just like I don't right. know what you have. Oh, uh, uh, we're still up in the air about this. This well, would be a test market thing in well, a few markets. Is trying to uh, take some live podcasts on the road with a, a live studio yeah. audience. It ain't a fucking cash cow. Well, again, it depends how we do it. Like the last time we did it, it was okay, uh, and this, it's, it's all about the mechanism. That's all. We we know it's gonna work. Like if we have to bring Inman in and set him on fire, I think you learned a lot. I can. I'm not sure. We learned a lot from the the All Phoenix things comedy. Yeah, and yeah. as a year ago, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, do you want to talk about this now? No, no. But, but I'm saying <laughs> it is a thing that we would. It's a uh, cost prohibitive. Yeah. We have to figure out you know yeah. how we travel. Yeah. We're not in a place where, yeah, we could do we could do a lot of markets on the West Coast that we don't want to burn. But who's in Reno? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But so it's uh, definitely not. It's, de it's definitely on the agenda as something to consider for sure. So what's what's the what, what's the top book? I think book filming is filming, uh, but they can go in parallel. And then a couple of the project ideas, which are... Well, obvious. filming in the Funhouse is another thing with sure. other comics. Yes. Olivia Grace, are you listening? We, are you waiting for an people. answer? <laughs> no, that's all I was waiting to hear. I thought we were, I thought we were doing a seance for a second. I was, grabbing, I was grabbing everybody's hands. Are you say, listening, yeah. Olivia Grace? How much does Doug know about telecommunications? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, yeah. Yes. All right. Well... Hannigan, uh, he'll be here for another couple of days, and uh, I'll I'll have something I have to do. Make sure you write soon. roast battle. Uh, in it's not going to uh, be. I'm not uh, doing. Andrew I'm not doing shit until after Super Bowl. I'm also thinking as well. Yeah, there's a good thing. Like I think, like I know. Here's a little thing that we did on uh, the website, which was we put up a little thing on the ticketing page saying, "If there are any issues with ticketing, we don't know anything about ticketing." We, we already the, have that up. You're right. That's what and I mean. they don't listen. I know, but they, no, they do. 100%. There's been a 100% fall off in emails we get about ticketing. No, no exaggeration. No, no. There's 100%. No, we get I nothing remember anymore. one, at least one email. <clears throat> I know it says not to ask you directly, but... Well, I used to, they get, But if you're sold you, out, do you have an extra ticket for me and my no, old lady? But the I'm trying that. to fuck but her, the, but I just met but her. But the point is, that email was just ignored. Because <laughs> it's like, we're not... You're a spam head. We're not going to talk to you. But uh, I think maybe moving forward, there might be other areas where we'll refine the communication process where we give people some guidelines about how to contact uh, yeah, us. Yeah, that's way... You're way down the road. That's right. uh, assuming I have a new hour. Of course. Because you're still retired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking at least till Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Right, exactly. Everyone should be aware of that. You're retired at least until Super Bowl. Right. Well, Brian, uh, again, uh, just having you in my life again gave me some kind of awkward comfort that oh, good. Uh, I don't usually find from you. I find oh. the opposite from oh. you. You're usually some kind of thorn in my side mm. that I feel bad <laughs> for, bad to be around. Uh, I don't want to take all the flack from the people on the internet that hate your guts. But they don't... I, oh, again. So well, I'm not... 
am I playing Poughkeepsie this week? It's your <laughs> fault. You booked the gigs. Why don't you ever come to where I live, Brian? Oh, <laughs> 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 Yeah, so yeah. yeah, send us uh, yeah, MP3s of your Hennigan's impressions, but mostly, <laughs> I want to. I want to. I, I, I've I, I said this earlier, but uh, yeah, keep sending the magnetic signs for the, uh, sh- the airport shuttle I bought. <laughs> I love the idea of having t- of telling someone that's coming to the Tucson airport, "Hey, don't worry, we'll pick you up," and you have the car parked out front, and it says. Tucson Rehabilitation Services, <laughs> and everyone's just waiting to see who comes out and gets in it. Yeah, it's going to be a little darker than I just know, rehabilitation. I know, but... You, you, yeah, I got you. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, and the listeners are now with you, and uh, hopefully we get a lot more magnetic signs. I want enough that I can change it every day on the Funhouse Airport Shuttle. And again, yeah, like don't make it something we can't put up for legal reasons. Yeah. Or yeah, just vulgarity. I don't want anything that's gonna get me pulled over, but I can I can stand a fucking neighbor hating me. <laughs> Cross eyed look. Hey, let's do a thank you for uh, the soda. Oh shit! Yeah, that's yeah. right. Fucking hmm. Mister Freak sent us all these sodas. Wow! <laughs> Bacon soda, sweet corn soda. Uh, wow. Buffalo ranch wing. dressing flavored buffalo wing oh, buffalo wing soda. Oh, I want to drink the ranch dressing with the buffalo wing. That sounds good. Oh, that's peanut blue butter cheese. and jelly. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly soda. So what we're gonna do is one day, and I, I'm I, he's not here right now, so I'll just say Kenny. No, I was gonna say we're gonna bet <laughs> Kenny to drink him. <laughs> I told when when we opened the box the other day on the patio. We go, oh, this is what Kenny has been begging us to dare him. Uh huh. To eat. We get the Burger King coupons every week. And there's a family pack of like three whoppers, three large fries, three this. And he says, I could eat that all in one sitting. And I go, well, all right, now you're going to have to wash it down with bacon flavored soda. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, come on, you guys are fucking with me. This is always your idea. We don't say, hey, Kenny can eat. You tell us that you are going to do the most disgusting thing, and as soon as we say okay, you go, oh, fuck, hey, why am I doing this? Because you told us to do it to you. Sounds like baking. He's baking for a meal, and I'm surprised that the bacon soda is the grossest part of this challenge for him. <laughs> Everything's the most big, the biggest hardship just him working the fucking haunted house back then. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sweating too much. I have to leave. Kristen's mad at me. Anyway. <laughs> hey, that's a podcast. We have to go. We have shit to drink. All right. Uh, play us out on something that uh, we don't have to pay uh, royalties. Royalties. It's already playing. Royal herd. A seal kissed by a rose. <laughs> Son of a gun. When grandma was a girly, it was a custom. Each night before she put up her hair and curls to kneel and tell her troubles to the angels. And that was the way with all the good little girls. But nowadays the maids are mercenaries. For earthly blessings is all they seem to care. They go down on their knees and ask the angels, please, to hearken to this modern maiden's prayer. Give me a lot of bows and lots of pretty clothes. Give me a peak and knees and feet for all the shows. Give me a millionaire to fall in love with me. Take me to Rector's, pay the collector's, one of those purely platonic protectors. Give me a limousine and diamonds like a queen. Give me most anything else you have to spare. Give me the boy that I am after. Let me retain my girlish laughter. That is the 20th century maiden prayer. And don't you know, last week I went out to a suffragette meeting and I spoke for the suffragists. I said, give us the chance to vote. Let the women vote. Send us to the polls. Why don't you send us to the polls? And a fresh man in the audience yelled out, 
Yes, send them to the polls, to the North and South Poles. Give me a chance to vote and get some fellow's goat. Give me the right to search my husband's pants and coat. Give me a gown with lines, one must show them at times. If I display much, be optimistic. Give me a man with an eye that's artistic. Give me a bathing suit so folks can say I'm cute. Don't let the water even touch my hair. And if my marriage proves to be phony, give me lots of alimony. That is the 20th century maiden prayer.